This video shows how Ableton 12 works on the cheapest M1 MacBook Air with uh, the M1 CPU released in 2020 and 8 gigs of memory and at the same time we're going to show off a simple how to make progressive house project in Ableton Live. The project is free to download, the links are in the description below. It, I'm only using Ableton stock plugins, so no third party plugins. You will also find other projects there in the description below. If you don't have Ableton 12, you can find Ableton Live 11 projects as well. A coffee or a small donation is always appreciated. If not, you can subscribe to the channel or like the video if you find it interesting. I have the CPU meter in Ableton Live open and only showing the performance score here because uh, the performance course is what Ableton Live is using. Using. On the MacBook Air we have four performance and four efficiency cores. I'm screen recording this live so this will also take about five to seven percent off the performance and you can also look at the top right corner here where you see it says two percent. This will uh, show you the uh, performance of the audio buffer on the Mac. It's not the performance of the CPU, it's actually the performance, the audio buffer. So it's a difference between the 2% on the top here and the uh, load you see on the window I have over here. The project itself is in 48 kilohertz and 512 buffer size and I'm using the internal sound card of the Mac so no third party things here. So remember this is the lowest end M based MacBook Air you could get so any MacBook Air you can buy today will handle what you see in this video most likely in a better way as well. So when I started this track I was uh, inspired by some pads and ambience and I wanted to start off with that and in Ableton 12 we have some new cool features. I'm not going to dive into depth in in those I used the chord generator to create the basic chords of this track and then I did some preset browsing as usual and I found this cool sounding pad sound to start off the track with and uh, it's being played by Ableton's synthesizer drift so this is a kind of an analog emulation synthesizer it sounds really good as you can see here if you turn on the automation view I am automating opening the filter here to bring the energy up between different parts of the track and then I just drop it off there and then it opens up again here doing this to create some tension and the movement in the track. I use the hybrid reverb to give it some more ambience and then I'm using the EQ to high pass and remove some nasty resonance in the patch here. It's actually pretty nasty if you listen here now. And if I turn off the EQ. Yeah, so I used the EQ to remove that resonance, pretty, uh, actually a lot there, around 1k. And then we have some uh, sidechain to the kick here. I'm not really sidechaining that much because I don't want the track to be an entire pumping mess, but uh, yeah, a, a little sidechain uh, to the kick there. The second pad track we have here is just to add some content in the higher frequencies and uh, it's more or less mixed the same as the previous pad and uh, then everything here is grouped into one track where I am cutting off the low end and I'm adding a little bit around 1 kilohertz because I kind of took a lot out. This will combine the both uh, tracks. Yeah, I'm removing some stereo information below 375 hertz and, and then I'm just changing to the clap just a tiny bit. Then we get this kind of pad sounding sound. I think it sounded pretty good. And you can hear it's pumping a little bit, but not that much. Then we have the kick and bass. It's The kick is not really anything special. It's something I found in the Ableton library. So it's a, a 909 kick. Just sounds like this and uh, along with the bass here it's just also something I found from the Ableton library. It's just a preset from Ableton's wavetable synthesizer. I did adjust the envelope a little bit shortening the release time and if you look at automations I'm also automating the filter on the bass just to give it some additional movement. Mixing wise the bass here is then sidechain to kick and clap some light EQing and a glue compressor to make everything just just a little bit tighter. 
So the automation there is just to give it some more interest. Then we have something called here is the dub wob bass thing. It's a preset from also from Ableton's Drift. It's a really cool analog synthesizer they released not long ago. I think uh, the Mog may, might be an inspiration here. This is a darker low ed pad sound. I think it sounds pretty cool. Again, I'm using the same uh, kind of automation I'm using on the other pads here. I'm just bringing it in a little bit and then taking it a little high on the end there and then going back down again. I think it uh, creates a cool sound. I would probably use my Mog synthesizer here, honestly. But uh, I th honestly, I think this sounds pretty good. A new plugin that came with Ableton 12 is the Roar plugin, and I think I have to make another video on this, just showing it off more. I added this to, it's kind of a saturator, but I think it's more complicated than that. I haven't delved that into it, but it adds some saturation to the sound. I can turn it off here. So this is without. And turn it on. So I'm setting the dry wet knob to 40% so I'm not mashing it into the sound, but uh, yeah, it makes it uh, sound a little bit more angry. So it's kind of a uh, Fab Filter Saturn replacement, maybe. I'm also EQing out some resonance here on, on the pad if I turn off the EQ. And also to give some space to other instruments so it doesn't take over the entire mix. And then of course it's sidechain uh, to the kick and uh, the clap. And I'm also removing some stereo information from the top and bottom end of this with the last EQ here. So hi-hats and percussion, I'm all just using something I found in the Ableton library. I think if you look at the actual loop audio, uh, we can take a look at uh, the file here. And I, as you can see here, I'm removing some transients from the sound, so the original sound on this thing sounds uh, like this. But I'm using this to remove some of the transients. Just to make it a little bit more tighter. And then we also of course have some EQ here and some compression on these two hi-hat tracks. These tracks are then sent into a group where I do some additional processing. We are adding the vocoder here to give them some more organic feel. This is a trick I got from a, uh, a musician called Antiquizer. You can check it up on Spotify. But this is without the vocoder. And this is with the vocoder. And then I use the LFO here to control the vocoder dry wet knob and then we also have some side chaining to the kick and clap here just to give, give it a little movement. We can also take a look at the automation on the uh, hi-hats here so you can see I have a reverb return track where I send the hi-hats to uh, occasionally. Again it's to give it some more movement and interest. The reverb return track have an EQ where I filter out the stereo information from the low end and it's also sidechained to the kick and uh, clap just a little bit. So both melody tracks are played using the wavetable synthesizer and I have Try to find some kind of pluck-like sounds that I liked. The last track here almost sounds like some kind of percussion because it's uh, filtered. So if we just play that with the, I don't know, the kick and the bass. It's almost like a percussion type of thing. It's, I think it sounds pretty cool in my opinion. shows that you don't necessarily have to use a standard percussion for percussion. You can just experiment with things. So if you look at the master chain here, it's rather sparse. I have a utility plugin where I automate the stereo width of the track on the master and uh, an EQ to remove some of the muddiness around 200 Hertz. And then I increased the uh, high end slightly. And then I use the uh, single knob thing here, fade to gray to give it some fade out effects in the transitions here, especially here to the, to the main melodic part here. You can see here. Then 
Then we use uh, the included limiter in Ableton Live just to increase the overall volume, set that a level that I hope Hopefully it doesn't distort and I think the target here in the most busy part here is around 9.5 uh, luffs in, in volume. So my approach to creating tracks lately is just trying to get the best I can out of every single track as opposed to adding more layers and more tracks on top of each other. It's not that I'm against a layering. But you have so many tools to your disposal today and it's easy to get overwhelmed. And sometimes you get into that happy accident place with a synth or a patch or something. And I think it can be cool to explore that single sound more without muddying it with other sounds. Sometimes I can get an idea just out of one single synth patch or and you can evolve that over time and it can be the kind of main part of a track and the other things are just sauce or gravy. I have tried to get the balance and mix as good as possible so I don't need that much on the master chain. My goal is always to try to get the mix sounding as good as possible and balanced before add adding additional limiters, multiband compressors, uh, saturation, clipping and everything like that on the master. So Ableton 12 with uh, the uh, cheapest MacBook Air. The Ableton stock plugins, they are really efficient. And uh, as you can see in this video here, the lowest end MacBook Air have no problems running this project. Uh, but of course the project is only 18 tracks. So it's, and I'm using 512 sample size. So it's not really that surprising, but it, it, you can see on the CPU meter in the video here, it could probably handle a lot more than this. One thing I'm noticing of the Ableton plugins, it seems that they have a little more resonance compared to more kind of, I don't know, pi uh, paid high end plugins, if you will. But uh, I mean, it's nothing that a well placed EQ can't fix. If you add third party plugins, though, the performance results may be different because they can be power hungry depending on what you use. If you use Serum Diva, and other types of plugins. But I think this shows that you can get really far using only the stock plugins in Ableton Live. And actually, I think I would like to explore this a little more because Ableton have a lot of packs on their website as well and things that, uh, yeah, might be interesting. Like the video or subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if it's important for you that I use only stock plugins in videos like this, please mention that in the comments below. So I know I think it's fun to limit myself in that way and maybe explore Ableton more. You can download this project from the links below. You need Ableton Live 12 standard, I think, and uh, you will find other projects there that works on Ableton Live 11 if you haven't uh, upgraded yet. And at the time of this recording, the project is free to download, but I always appreciate a coffee or a uh, small donation if you find this useful. It will also motivate me to make more videos like this. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.